Welcome to a new video on my series about GNU slash Linux and Ethernet. Today I will start with the theory part which is needed for understanding how Ethernet is working. And if you're familiar with Ethernet or networking in general, you maybe already have heard the term layer models. So for example, there is an OSI layer model or a TCP IP layer model. And in today's video, I want to explain to you how layer models work in general by giving a very easy example. Okay, but first let's talk about why layer models are used. So basically like every time you have something huge and complex, you like to split it into smaller pieces. And in here, the layers are just such smaller pieces and they are used to reduce the complexity. Each layer has a specific functionality assigned to it. And this functionality can be used by an upper layer as a service. But one important thing is the upper layer doesn't need to know how the functionality is implemented. All it does is it is using a standardized or normed interface. So, and this will lead to the fact that layers are exchangeable. So it's possible that the functionality or how the functionality is implemented in a layer is changing, but for the upper layer, this isn't a problem because it's still using its normed interface and then it still works. Okay, so as an explanation here, I want to explain a layer models for philosophers. So let's think about the following situations. We have two philosophers, one sitting in Germany, only speaking German, and one sitting in India, only speaking Hindi, for example. And they are both working on the same topic and they like to exchange their ideas so they can make some progress in their studies. But the thing is, if they just would call one another, it wouldn't work because they don't understand the same languages. But luckily, the philosophers do have some staff and this staff is helping them for getting a communication line implemented here. So this is now how it works. Let's say the German philosopher wants to send his ideas to the Indian or for, to the philosopher from India. Then what the philosopher does, he's writing his ideas to a letter and he's passing it to a translator. The translator translates the letter from German to English and hands the translated letter to a secretary. The secretary is typing the letter in an email program and sending the letter per email. And the secretary in India is receiving the letter and passing it up to a translator. This translator translates the letter from English to Hindi and passes it up to the philosopher again. And the other direction also is working the same way. So now from a philosopher's point of view, it seems they are talking directly to one another. And also for the translators, it seems they are communicating to one another directly. So we have here this translator layer and we have a secretary layer. And the normed interface here would be the philosopher handing the letter to the translator and the translator handing the tra um, translated letter to the secretary and in the other direction. And I also told you that layers are exchangeable. So let's say the translator doesn't understand English, but instead both sides translate to Spanish now. So for a philosopher's point of view, nothing changes. The professor from India still hands um, the letter in Hindi to the translator and then the translator translates it to a different languages or to a different language. And everything is still working. Or you have to know in Germany, on some spots we have very bad internet. So maybe the secretary is not using an email to send the data, but instead it, um, the secretary is using traditional mail. Then of course it will take some, some more time for the information to arrive, but for the philosopher's point of view, or even for the translator's point of view, nothing changed. They're just using their standardized and normed interfaces and passing and receiving the information from there. Okay, so this was a very simple example about how a layer model works. In my next video, we will take a look at the OSI layer model. Okay, so I think that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. 
In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash Linux. So thanks for watching and goodbye.